Hello everyone. As part of Dental Carey's video series, the topic I'm going to cover is etiological factors and microbiology of dental caries. The etiological factors of dental caries were initially given by Keyes in the form of a triad. The tooth, dental plaque and diet were presented in a model of overlapping circles. This help to explain the caries risk of a person. When all these factors got together, it would result in caries. However, he did not consider an important factor of time because only on prolonged exposure would caries be initiated. This was given by Newburn and later it came to be known as the Newburn's Ted Pratt. The etiological factors of dental caries can be classified into primary factors and secondary factors. The primary factors are the teeth, the diet, the dental plaque and microorganisms. And secondary factors are saliva, other dietary factors, vitamins and mineral intake, hereditary factors and other environmental factors. Coming to the primary factor that is the teeth and the morphology of teeth is a very important determinant of dental caries. When patients have deep pits and fissures, that is accentuated pits and fissures, they have a tendency to accumulate dental plaque, which makes the teeth more prone to dental caries. In teeth that have fluorosed enamel, the enamel is more resistant to acid attack, hence it is less prone to dental caries. When there is enamel hypoplasia, because of the hypoplastic nature of the enamel, this can result in in a uh, faster uh, affecting of enamel due to dental caries and thus there has increased caries incidence. Increased buccolingual width of teeth means that where there will be a tendency for dental plaque to accumulate under contact areas and will be more inaccessible to oral hygienates. Therefore, it will be more prone to caries. There are other two factors which come under teeth. One is the composition. If there is a high concentration of fluoride, zinc, palladium and iron and low level of water, carbon dioxide and carbonate, the teeth will be less prone to caries attack because this favors resistance of enamel to acid dissolution. The other is position. In malaligned teeth, uh, out of position teeth and rotated teeth, there is difficulty in maintaining oral hygiene and favors accumulation of food debris. Hence, it can make the teeth more prone to dental caries. Coming to dental plaque and microorganism, the concept of dental plaque was proposed by Williams in 1897 and G.V. Black defined it as a thin transparent film that usually escapes observation and is revealed only by careful search. Dental plaque has a very important role to play in initiation and progression of dental caries. It consists of salivary component that is mucin, desquamated epithelial cells, microorganisms and acquired pellicle. The microorganisms in dental plaque or the microbiology of dental caries is a very important short note or a viva question. You have to mention these four microorganisms, the streptococci, the prominent species being streptococcus mutans, sanguis and salivarius, actinomyces species, that is actinomyces viscosus and israeli, violinella or violinella parvula and lactobacilli. Now, pioneer bacteria are the ones which have initially colonized on the surface of the tooth and are responsible for initiation of caries. I repeat, these are known as the pioneer bacteria or the primary bacteria. Streptococcus mutans are implicated in initiation of smooth surface caries. Lactobacilli are implicated in pit and fissure caries and actinomyces are suspected to cause root surface caries. Once the caries lesion is initiated, there are other bacteria which colonize this region and these are known as the secondary bacteria or the invaders. These are staphylococci and Vielonelle. Streptococcus mutans is considered to be a chief etiological agent in dental caries disease 
by virtue of two of its properties one is acidogenicity that is it can produce low ph by utilizing sucrose and it can survive in low ph which means that it is aciduric it utilizes sucrose at a faster rate than other bacteria and can metabolize sucrose to synthesize glucans and fructans and also uh, synthesizes sticky polysaccharides which help in attachment to the tooth structure it also can store intracellular glycogen that prolongs its metabolic activity lactobacilli are found in caries dentin and saliva of persons with high caries activity these are also acidogenic microorganisms and are considered responsible for initiation of pit and fissure caries actinomyces are found particularly in root caries again these are acidogenic microorganisms and they attach to the glycoprotein uh, tooth structure by a glycoprotein called lectin lack ph if goes below 5.5 can result in demineralization hence this is considered to be a critical ph so 5.5 is considered to be critical ph for most of the individuals when a person takes sucrose or uh, if we give them a 10% glucose rinse and monitor the changes in ph over a period of time we can see that there is a dip in the ph of the plug if it goes below 5.5 and stays below 5.5 for a very long time then the patient is considered to be at a high risk of developing caries if after uh, glucose rinse even if it falls below 5.5 but the recovery of the ph above 5.5 is faster it means that the patient has less caries susceptibility and saliva has a good buffering capacity now this curve which is seen on the right side of your screen is also known as the stefan's curve to determine the caries susceptibility of an individual by giving 10% glucose rinse and monitoring the change in ph over a period of time then comes the diet fermentable carbohydrates are the most caryogenic component of the diet and their caryogenic potential depends upon the frequency of ingestion if you are taking uh, sticky carbohydrates more frequently there is a high chance of developing dental caries physical form that is sticky carbohydrates have higher chances of developing dental caries chemical composition sucrose related uh, foods are uh, uh, higher caries inducing food materials route of administration and effect of other food constituents which make the uh, food sticky in liquid form or in solid form if there is solid form there is higher chance of developing caries sucrose is called as the arch criminal of caries as it is utilized by bacteria as a source of energy it is metabolized by bacteria to form glucans and fructans and the diffusion of sucrose in plug is fast as compared to other sugars so other microorganisms are also able to utilize it now plug ph and salivary buffering capacity are very important determinants of dental caries apart from that the quantity of the saliva is an important factor the quantity and the flow of the saliva so if the flow rate is good if the quantity of saliva is good it can keep replenishing calcium and phosphate on the tooth surface the buffering effect of saliva if it is good then it will not allow plaque ph to remain below 5.5 for a long time these are all protective properties of the saliva again we come to viscosity of the saliva if the salivary viscosity is thick and ropey and increased this favors caries whereas thin serous saliva favors remineralization and helps in prevention of caries in the next series in the next video we will be talking about histopathology of dental caries thank you